Hello there, everyone, and welcome to the Sighted Geeks Linden Scripting Language Tutorial with me, John Parker, and me, Jack Gerling. And today we are continuing on with the same more or less topic from uh, last week, which is the LL primitive params. Um, today we're going to be looking at changing the textures and obviously adding some lights and just basically messing with the effects more and the features and uh, and the textures and one on the colors and uh, making objects become what they what we want them to be. So um, <coughs> let's begin. Uh, I'll raise my cube. Everyone starts off with the cube. So all right, I'm just making sure light lighting works. And as you can see, Jack. It does, kind of. We'll have to sort that out later. Okay, then, so. Yep. Start off with that script. Because everyone yep. likes scripts. So today, guys, we're going to see how to change textures on a cube, or on any object, on any face, and also to change the lighting settings on an object using LL set primitive params. And I'll try and be as brief as I can, because, as I said, this function is quite a lengthy thing to discuss. Okay then. So as I said, I'm going to get rid of the touch part because we don't really need it for this okay. uh, tutorial. Don't I'm going to we're going to do the set primitive params job, and I'm going to focus on the lighting first because it's the more extensive one. So I'm just going to quickly grab the documentation because I do like to refer to it just in case I get anything wrong. I do try and be as precise as I can. Well, you know how primitive params is like an array in a, in a sense, right? Yes. Do you do the indentation, the syntax kind of thing? You can do. In fact, I did notice in the last video, Jack, you were doing the correct way of doing it. You are yeah. correct when you did that, by the way. It's, Very uh, well it's natural instinct. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like that, but I was like being a bit dumb. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's me or for you. <laughs> okay, then. So what we're going to be using, we're going to be using a rule called, if I can find it, because I need it. <laughs> oh, no, it's called anyway. It's prim point light. And they call it a point light because apparently that's the only light that they have in Second Life, which is a point light. But it's really more of a, a wide area light, in my opinion, because eh, it does affect really. the area. It is actually uh, effectively a point light because if you do it in Blender, you create a. <coughs> it actually has um, an object called a point light and does kind well, of work well, the same way as how these, how these work. It's funny how I always thought point lights were like literally pointing to a point. No, it just means like a specific, well, specific area. Or uh, okay. <laughs> technically called spotlights, that way. Uh, well, either way. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Oh yeah, because I know sometimes they call them spotlights. Anyway, so this the uh, constant you need is prim point light. Prim point light. Yep. And it takes one, two, three, four, five um, parameters. This particular one does this setting. <laughs> it takes the whether or not it's on. So that's true or false. So of course, yep. I want it to set it to true because we do want it on. Yep. The next one is the colour in a vector format, so we're going to have, I don't know, what colour do you want, Jack? Normally it's white, but it can be any colour you like. Make it um, a nice green. Nice green. green. That's, uh, zero, uh, zero, one, zero. Oops. Yep. The next one is intensity. I normally put that as 1.0, just for this demonstration purposes. Let's give it the full intensity it can. Radius is a maximum of up to, from 0 0.1 to 20. So, what should we have? We don't um, have 20, because it'll be too, too big. It'll conflict with each other's... Box. Have five, five meters. Yeah, go on. Go on. Five point out then. And the next one is the fall off. I just said this is the lowest value, which is zero point zero one. Okay. okay. If I click save, hopefully you should start seeing the lights take effect. Yes, there we go. Look, the light comes on. And if you click save on yours, Jack, have you done that? Yes, you have. I think. All right. Uh, yep. Okay, I'm going to have to make this uh, box a bit brighter so we can see the light take effect. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, that's better. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so, as you can see, guys, let's get this box out of the way for you. Okay, so as you can see, the light is now affecting five meters approximately from the center point of the object that the script is in. Now, remember, LL set primitive params affects the entire object in general, but I think, I'm not entirely certain, this is only affecting the root prim. I suppose I could doubly prove that by linking that up and getting rid of the script on the other one, turning the light off from it, just to prove to you guys to see... Well, actually, it's like finding out right now, because I don't quite know whether it will. Uh, let's just reset that script to definitely make sure that it's not affecting anything. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, it's only affecting the root prim. So if you use LL set primitive params and not the link version, then only this, um, only the root prims or the one that has a script in it, I think. Hang on, is that LL effect. set primitive params link? No, just LL set primitive params. The one we okay. just did. 
So would you affect uh, links, linked objects as well? Well, first of all, I don't. I know how LL set link primitive params will do it, but I just want to see whether if I move that script into this object, will it also set it on that one? It should do. I've, uh, I've never actually tried this. It's, it's, it's actually interesting. When I'm doing these tutorials, sometimes I find things. Yes, there we go. So it's whatever the script is in. So if the script is in a certain link, it'll affect that link. If you don't use the link version, I think that's how it works. Okay. Okay. So. Um, so yeah, and of course, as I said, if you want to make every single um, link in your object have the light effect, you can use LL set link primitive params, and it will affect the entire thing as long as you set it to link set. So if you go on this one, so for example, I've got the script in this one, which is the second link. Mm -hmm. If I go LL set link primitive, uh, one way around on LL set link primitive params. And then I put link set there. Uh, yep. And save that. There we go. Ah, Both of them now have a light. That's interesting. I like that. <clears throat> now, I didn't explain this last time, but this link set can also be a number. And that number is the link number. So the root prim, which is this one over here, always has a link number of one, as you can see here. Yep. If I click on this one, it has a link number of two. And that's in order of backwards it's in backwards order when you link them. So for example if I had three cubes yep. right say there was one over here. If I selected that one, then that one, then the root prim and linked it, the first one I selected, which would be the last one no, yeah, the first one I selected would be the last number, so I think that would be like three. Okay. And it'd be two and one. I think that's how it works. It's a bit backwards. You guys will find out when you start linking and see what it says there. If you have a viewer that actually displays a link number by the way. Okay, so I can get rid of, I can unlink them now and delete the other one now because we don't need that other cube. Just for demonstrative purposes. And I've just deleted my script. But luckily I kept a backup of it, so. <laughs> okay, so back to the script now then. So, um, so that's pretty much how you do print point lights. And as I said, using our last video, we did uh, some while statements with the flashing of lights. Mm -hmm. You can use the same technique with lighting as well. So if you had a, a while loop, you could use multiple ones of those to change the colour of the light and make it flash different colours. And in fact, I can actually show you a nice demonstration of that in action, as I did make this lovely, these three nice uh, objects called Steve, Callum and Bob, which use very similar techniques. Bloody There you hell. go. So what's happening th there is these objects are um, spinning, as you can see, but also they're changing their colour, as we did in the last video, and they're also changing their light. As you can see, they're very intense. They're using the maximum settings available to be able to perform this effect. Okay? Oh, and by the way, Jack, in our previous video, I did state that the prim colour <coughs> last parameter would not affect the transparency. Well, actually, it does. I was wrong. I did put that as an annotation on the video. So, as you can see, these are semi-transparent, and that was done through the prim color variable. So, I was wrong with that, just for you guys' knowledge. Okay. So, back to the cube. And I keep deleting that script, don't I? <laughs> right. The next thing I want to do is prim texture. Okay. Now, I have to be absolutely truthful with it with you. I haven't really used this. <coughs> Um, particular setting. Well, really, the, reason, the, the reason being is because I never needed to, but yeah, I can teach you very thing. easily how to do it because it's right here on documentation. <laughs> okay. Okay. Prim underscore texture. That's oh, it. Okay. Now, uh, yes, that's fine. So what this takes is the face, mm -hmm. the texture, which is a string. So that could be a texture, I think, in the cube, or a texture U UID. So one in your inventory, which I'll show you in a moment. The next one is a vector for repeats. So how many repeats there are. X and Y range from 0 to 100, as it says, or minus 0 to minus 100 in 0 0.01 increments, which takes the, like, you can flip textures with it and all that. It's like a, what's the one? Oh, yeah, like scale. Like you can scale in objects and scale the textures and whatnot. And also the offsets, so moving a, a texture along the side if you want to do animations and whatnot. And the next one is a float for the rotation, which is apparently the angle in radians. So we'd have to do radian conversion if you wanted to use that. We'll probably just use zero for this. So let me just explain what I was just all saying. So if I use all sides, because we want to affect all the sides of this cube, and I'm going to go ahead and grab a texture that I have in my inventory. Let's choose... 
that's police box sign that we have for our console exterior. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this, I'm going to click copy asset UUID, which will get us the UUID for it. And here you go, Jack, if you want to use it as well. Oh. Okay. Thank you. And what you're going to do is in string, so in two quotes, just paste that in. And then the next one we want is repeats. I don't think we need repeats, but I'm going to put both, all of them as one, one, one. And I think that's what I had to do last time. Uh, apparently Z is ignored, so we can actually put that val last value as zero. It doesn't actually matter what it is because it says it's ignored. And the next one is offsets. Again, Z is ignored. We don't need an offset really, so I'm just going to put, uh, I think it's just one and one. I think one is like the default for all these. And then the angle is zero, so I'm going to do that. Oops, don't need the brackets. There we go. So let's just make that bigger. So as you can see, guys, it's prim texture, all sides, then the UID. Then your repeats, I'll just put it as 110. Then your offsets as 110. And then your angle as 0. Let's just see if this works. I've never properly done this, though. Let's go. Oh, and there we go. Look at that. Bog standard texture. Now, you'll notice it. Look, it's fitting the, each of the sides perfectly. It is. As well. and, the re and the reason is because of these 1111. One, one, one. As I said, the default value is 1 for all of them. And we can see this if we go to the texture tab. As you see, we've got 1, 1, and then the hot offsets, we've got 1, 1. And if I change these on the tab thing, you can see that they, they move around. And this is how you could do animations, really, but you can use LL set texture anim to do that if you wanted to. But we can change the repeats, which is the ones up here, like the scales or the repeats per meter to change how it looks. If I change the uh, Y value of the repeats to 2, for example, let's see what that does. And there you go. <coughs> what it's changed is it's this vertical scale. Okay, so it's changing the scale. But as I said, the repeats can also be the scale on certain ones. Okay. And you can see the repeats per meter has also changed to 4. So now we've got two, effectively, pictures on here, but it, they've gone ahead and squeezed it on. You can see that that's, that's effectively two photos, but like squished. And if I change the other value to 2, so we've got x and y now as 2 for the scale. Should see. Yep, there you go. A nice even uh, lopping. In fact, you could use that as, uh, you know, like Christmas wrapping textures. Mm -hmm. You could use it for that kind of, couldn't you? Think about it. But you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that when, yeah, but you wouldn't do that in scripts, really. The only reason you'd use this prim texture thing is like if you wanted to have some sort of texture changing device. For example, Jack, this is an interesting idea. Maybe this might be an artist in the future. Who knows? But our exterior, if you want to make like a damaged version of it, my friend Mickey uh, that we had in a couple of videos ago um, actually suggested this. You could actually have it so your exterior changed texture if it was damaged. You could use the same technique with that. Okay, so it's just an idea. It is useful. Also, also mm -hmm. could you have, um, for example, uh, for an online offline system? Yes. Yes. So, yes. like, for example, uh, when you've got like, like, uh, you know, status online, obviously switch it to. I'm, I, have you, haven't you got that already? I do have an a working example of this. This online thing, I think, does have. Uh, Yes, it does. It uses the prim texture technique. And you'll see when I click it. Here you go, look. Okay? Pretty awesome. I like that. So, you can use it for that type of thing. Okay. So, that's... Uh, prim so that's basically the prim texture. Um, how long have we been recording, Jack? Uh, 50 minutes. Mm. Do you want to stop there? Might as well. Okay. With, you know, nice and short, as I always say. Yes, because we want to keep it short, otherwise it's too long. So. And then they get boring and, and also mm. confusing. But as you can see, guys, you can do quite a lot. Just to quickly reel off some of the very fun ones, just in case you want to do some research in, in, until we've actually covered them. You've got things like Prim Rotation, Prim Rotation Local, which is Prim Rot Local on this, Prim Parser Local for Position, uh, Prim Phantom, Prim Temp on Res, Prim Physics, Prim Material, changing material settings like stone, metal, grass, wood, flesh, etc. Whatever you know, the sound effects if you walk on it. Physics Shape Type, you know, like Convex All or Prim. Slice, Type, Description, Name, uh, Shiny, Bump Mapping, the normal Texture Generate or Text Gen. Um, glow Amiga, which is like rotation, 
Um, so everything that you can change, all the different functions, most of them are in this primitive params. It's a very powerful function. You can change almost anything about this prim. The only things you can't change are certain statuses, which you'd have to use LL set status for that. And statuses are things like, um, well, once it's loaded, because the wiki is a bit slow to load, I can give you a small list of that just to give you an idea of what statuses are. They're very simple things. Uh, but my internet doesn't appear to be wanting to... No, I think the wiki's failing again. But anyway, you can do things like, uh, you know when uh, an object flings off to the edge of a land? Yes. Yes, there you go, it's loaded. You can actually set status die at edge, which means if it hits the edge of the land, ah, it will die. It will delete That's itself. pretty cool, yeah. And things like block grabs that prevent click and drag movement on the root prim. And um, you can also turn off whether an object can rotate on certain axes. So you can tell it to not rotate on X, Y, or Z. And therefore you can't rotate the object. And as I said, physics can also be a status sandbox. So keep the object within 10 meters and in the same region. Prevent that from uh, moving. Cast shadows, although apparently that's not used yet. Return at edge, so return the object to the owner if it goes to the edge of the land. There's a lot of statuses you can change as well with the LL set status. Research that, guys. It's very easy to use. I think I'll provide a link. I'll provide a link in the description and on the video itself as well. Yeah. I mean, literally, that's all. this is all it is. It's just... It says the integer status, integer value. Status is like a flag, so like status physical. Because that's the one we can demonstrate right now. Uh, I can't spell physical. <laughs> no, sorry, it's physics. <laughs> so status physics, and then the value, set to true. And there you go. Three, two, one. Hopefully. Didn't you, just, cl didn't you just close it before it compiled? Yeah, it just, yeah, sorry. I'm stupid sometimes. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's better. And now, ta-da, it's physical. So statuses are fun as well. They're very similar to primitive parents, but they are different. So. <laughs> well, anyway, there you go, guys. That's pretty much really we need to turn. There's nothing else we could really go into on that. Um, like I said, I'll provide a link in the description and on the video itself so that you can check out yourself the other um, uh, bits and pieces that you can put in. So, um... That's pretty much it. So until next time, folks, do take care. And uh, I'm not quite sure what we're going to touch on next. Uh, it might might be related, but might have something completely different, something brand new. Depends on what it comes to, yeah. So until next time, see you soon. But, take... but I would like to say, just before we go, Jack, um, we will most likely in future tutorials be using primitive params function with ones that we haven't covered. If that's the case, just research it. Because you'll see it in the script anyway that we're working on. Okay, carry on. Okay, no worries at all. So, until next time, folks, see you soon, take care, and bye-bye uh, for now. Bye-bye, guys! That is all we have for today, folks. Join us again next week on another Saturday Geeks video to find out what adventure we embark on next. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like and comment on the video below. Remember to subscribe so you can keep up to date with our latest videos. Till next time. Take care, stay safe, and remember... Let your geeky side out. Toodle pip. Toodle pip.